the way, my favorite setting on this thing, um, I'll give you my brass setting. I just like the brass. So, okay, welcome to this class right now. And today we're going to be talking about the Roland Airphone AE20. Now, I know you are new to the instrument and congratulations on getting your first instrument, your first Roland Airphone A20. Maybe you had the other Airphones or maybe this is the first Airphone entirely that you've ever had. Welcome to the experience. My name is Toya Ray Sanara and I am a YouTuber, content creator, podcaster, and I'm going to be teaching you how to use this instrument. I got a lot of comments about the instrument. Initially, I had I have a very complex relationship with this instrument because initially I said the instrument wasn't that good from what I saw online, but I had to change my mind and get the instrument in person. I tried it out and then from then on, I have been an advocate for the Roland Airphone A20. Not sponsored by Roland, not a partner with Roland, not a partner with the Airphone, but I really like the instrument and I decided to teach a class on the instrument. So I want to be very um, practical with you because there are some things I don't like about the instrument that um, we're going to be addressing first of all to get you started. So I want to start with the things you need to, to basically tweak to get the best setup possible. <laughs> Are we okay with that? The first thing first is this guy. This is a spit collector. Now this spit collector is it's good, it's great, but I have an issue with it when it comes to it staying on. It's, it's supposed to fit in like this, but it always falls off. So just know that, that it'll keep falling off and just be careful not to lose it. Or maybe in situations when you don't need, you're not playing for that long, you don't need the speed collector. But if you're playing for a long time on stage, you need the speed collector. It's really helpful. I still like it. I still haven't found a better solution on how to handle it yet, but I know I will eventually. So now I'm going to start with the instrument off. But the next thing I want to talk about is your mouthpiece. Now, if you haven't done this here, this is going to surprise you, but you can actually take off the mouthpiece. So this is the mouthpiece right here. And what you do is that you use cold water to wash this. You wash it out. Be careful. Wash everything out. And this guy, you use a damp cloth and you clean very carefully. Don't bend this too much. This is like the very most, most important part about this instrument. So you want to keep it as on touch as possible. The first time I did this, I was very scared. But after like two, three times of cleaning the instrument, I got used to it. But you have to be very careful. Don't play around at this point. Just clean it and go. Basically clean it and be done with it. Wash this with cold water. Let it be clean. Don't worry too much about the reed. Just wash everything and dry with a, a napkin or you just leave it, it to air out and then cover this back. Well, though, I would recommend don't leave this open as for a long time. Maybe you can see, I don't know if you can see this, my hand covering it back. Yeah. So don't leave this open for a long time because if you do, there's a bigger tendency for it to drop and other things to happen to it. I don't think you've seen that, but let's take a test. That's what it looks like. So this, it's this stick, it bends for pitch correction and um, for vib whatever you want to do, whatever you assign to it. Now, because there are so many functionalities on the Aerophone A20, I won't be getting into all of them now. This will just be basically a guide. So you see, I slide it on Boom. and that's it. This is basically a, be a guide video because I know there's some other classes online that um, can actually get this, this instrument better for you too. So check out my course, check out, the, out all the classes from other Airphone teachers online and yeah, get the best of all worlds. But this class is free to you. So, hey, watch till the end. Um, next thing I'm going to talk about is the mouth guard. Now, this is something that saxophonists always do. We always put a mouth patch on our saxophone mouthpieces. The mouth patch is a protection and insurance that you don't, when you bite, you don't end up damaging your mouthpiece, especially this mouthpiece that's not that cheap. I think it's like $35 replacements on their website. You don't want to damage this at all. Never, ever. So immediately you get the instrument, buy a mouth patch, buy it and just install it, align it with the tip and just place it on top of it. If you have any questions about that, you can always ask in the comments and we'll get to this. Um, so the mouth peach piece patch will be here covering that instrument. And now that we have the basic set tool, let's talk about another thing very carefully. 
the the stand i have links to all my gear on thurman music store and this is the exact one i got on you can check out my links to thurman there but i have an issue with this one because when i got it 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 didn't stand i don't think i've talked about it yet in the video so this is very key for you guys it didn't work because once i put the earphone on there and put it on the table it just kept it would just fall over and I was very, you see, the <laughs> that thing fell off again, the speed collector. I was very concerned. I was like, what is happening? I took a lot of, of thinking and the Lord just gave me an inspiration. So what I did was that I bent this piece a bit. It's two pieces. So this piece is an, like an L. How do you do an L? Anyway, it's two pieces. Like this and like this. I bent this bottom piece to decrease the angle. Like I just used the table and bent it a bit. So don't be scared to bend this thing a bit. Bend it to get a different angle or closer, a more acute angle, and then screw it back on and test it. If your earphone stands, then you're in the game. If it still falls, then tweak it a bit more until you get the right texture or rather <laughs> the right balance to get the instrument to stand. Okay, that's just for free right there. Hey, <laughs> please, if you're getting value from this video, like it and share it with someone else in the earphone community. I want to add a lot of value to you. I want to give you the best and I'll make sure that you get done with your learning process because it was a bit of a challenge learning this instrument and I want to help you out. Okay, let's go. So we're going to switch on the instrument for the first time for you or maybe not the first time. So we put it on. So what we find about this instrument is that it has many connectors. First of all, it has this quarter inch jack. That's what they call it, the quarter inch, one of a four inch jack. And that is like your standard guitar jack right there. It has a headphone headphone inputs and it has a space for batteries batteries are very important now what i do is that i use rechargeable batteries you might you do definitely want to use it, rechargeable batteries i use the fujitsu fujitsu batteries the japanese brand of batteries and i bought their charger these batteries are doing well for me now um you can buy any brand you want rechargeable batteries buy them buy the rechargeable charger so that whenever you use these batteries you can charge them up if you just want to use batteries by themselves you're going to spend a lot of money over time. It's a lot cheaper in the long term to buy rechargeable batteries. Trust me, buy rechargeable batteries. So I close this up and um, the next thing I do, I lock it. This has, has a locking mechanism right here. There are knobs. These are the scene knobs. We'll get to them in a few seconds. The screen, really nice. I like the screen. By the way, I am using a different neck strap right now. I think I left my neck strap at church. When I played last so I'm gonna look for it but I have this other neck strap a saxophone neck strap and that's a nice thing you can use your regular saxophone neck straps the Venova neck strap is nice because it's a bit small I think it's like a soprano size neck strap so like some of my auto neck straps like my jazz lab pro doesn't really work because it's too long this one is okay it works so you might have to experiment to find out the perfect length of neck strap that you have the scene knobs, they switch between all the scenes, which is kind of nice. You can configure this scene knob to be like a transpose knob if you really wanted to, or something else. You can configure that. I like it, leave it as a scene knob, and there's some shortcuts to like, if I hold down, um, if I hold down the arrow button and I, and I turn the downward arrow and I turn this thing, I get my, my different user scenes that sounds I've designed. I don't know when, but I will be, there will be a point where I'll be releasing sounds. I design sounds too, but I'm going to be really busy in the next few weeks. So, um, it's in the works. I will design some very nice sounds. I mean, the presets are good, but I mean, there's some things that are missing in the presets that I really would like. So I'll be creating my own preset pack and you guys will get access to that in the nearest future. But for now, I'm quite, I'm quite busy and I won't be able to get that done immediately. The volume knob, very important volume knob, that's how you increase or decrease your volume. Make sure that your volume is not at zero, because if it's at zero, you will not hear any sound. You have a, a headphone, headphone output here, and you have a, a, what do you call it? a DC in, so you can connect it to the wall and plug it directly. I like that method when I'm in the studio, because I don't have to worry about finishing my batteries. And the nice part is I want you to plug it in, it doesn't, it stops using your battery, so you can leave the batteries in there while you're using the DC in. It doesn't charge the batteries though. I wish it did, but it doesn't. So um, let's go on from there. It has a USB-C of course, which is actually very nice. And um, with all that said, let's get into the instrument itself. So the first thing I did was that I actually turned off the inbuilt speakers, because 
they were just not clicking it for me. Like once I demoed the sound with the speakers, I was almost disappointed with the instrument. So just turn off those speakers for now, except you have a specific reason you need those speakers on. So go to menu. And when you get to the menu, you press the, the, the plus button. You keep, you keep going down. You keep scrolling till you see, sorry, I don't have a B-roll camera yet. Hey, support this channel. Maybe as we grow, we can get some more cameras. So we scroll until I see a place that says, um, speaker setting see that on the speaker setting so on that speaker setting i'm going to press the menu button again it takes me to the lower register and i'm going to switch it to off you see there's an auto mode there's an on mode and there's an off mode leave it off you don't need it you don't need it trust me you don't need it so now that the speaker is off um you want to start the instrument how you hold so make sure you're connected by the way if you don't have an a quarter inch jack is okay you can use your headphones connect them here our bottom lip i'm going to place it on the ridge of our teeth and our top teeth is gonna press onto the mouth patch on our mouthpiece or our mouthpiece if you don't yet have a mouth patch so it's like this okay this is basic saxophone and bushel technique so let me give you a, a secret right now. If you're struggling with ambush and stuff, you can go watch beginner saxophone videos and then you can come back and continue your practice because this is basically designed as a saxophone. So, tip. So, I put my lower lip and then my upper teeth and I suck in my sides. Although, honestly, it doesn't matter. Even if I did wrong techniques, nobody would notice and the sound will be the same, but teaching the right thing. And here you go. Now, the thing I, I forgot to mention was that the, this um, pitch bend wheel is actually really good. So you can go up and down. And then these are octave keys. So what happens is that you press this to go to a lower octave. You press this this lower octave one, these together, the, the second lower octave, this one by itself, the third lower octave. So let me do it again. This one, lower octave, together, the second lower octave, this one the lowest octave, minus three. This one, high octave, together, second octave, this one, plus three, third octave. So you have three plus three plus one, that's six, seven, uh, a range of seven octaves on this instrument, and it could be more depending on the kind of sounds and how you do your presets. Where you start the entry level of the sound, you can, trust me, you can get to the moon if you really wanted to on this instrument, you can. Okay, um, now that we have covered the range of the instruments, let's let's learn our notes, shall we? So I don't think I might have um, time to give you all the all about the byte sensors and everything, but I will tell you this: before we start, go into the menu and scroll all the way to the point where you see byte control mode. You're gonna see byte control mode. So when you see byte control mode, like I'm seeing right now, what you're going to do is very simple. You're going to change it from sax. It's usually on sax. You're going to change it to iwi. It's much better. The sax. Let me let me play. Let me let me play. Let me show you what the sax sounds like. So basically, it makes this more like a pitch bend too, but with the iwi, it's quite different. Sax again. Iwi. Sax. Okay, <laughs> the sax mode is not actually as bad as it was before because I've done some tweaking. So um, your sax mode might sound a bit more more jarring, but go to iwi mode first of all. Then second thing first, byte center. I leave that on auto. Okay, byte center on auto, and then I'll I'll give you guys some more advanced tutorials later on. But right now this is going to be a beginner tutorial, so I'm not going to go too far in there. So now that you're on iwi mode. 
let's talk about your keys, shall we? We'll talk about the keys and we'll end there for now. And in the future, if, well, if you like this kind of videos, if you like how much we have covered in this short time, you let me know and I'll make a follow up videos about this. Um, I'll value your time and I'll value mine too. So I'll give you what you need and that's it. Okay. So about the keys, um, these are all saxophone key fingerings. When you cover everything plus this, that's a low C. And by the way, there's a fingering chart inside the packet and you can check the fingering chart online. If I can, I'll link it into, you see it on the screen right now. So I'll do some editing and do that in there. So, Hey, give it, please give a thumbs up if you're enjoying this so far. So I put the C. This is my C. Then this is my D. I remove this just one, two, three, one, two, three, D. This is my E, one, two, three, one, two. This is my F. This is my F sharp. I just switched this F sharp. G, A, B, C, and C sharp. Now, you're gonna have to learn the chromatics. The chromatics of an instrument is where the, the everything lies. But for now, if you wanna transpose, I can show you how to transpose. So what you're gonna do is that you're gonna go into your menu. And by the way, if your menu is far away in, just press the arrow backwards till you get to the beginning where it says master tuning. So you scroll one by one until you get to system transpose. That's like a third option there. And then you scroll down, you press menu again. So let's say everybody is playing in the key of B. What you're gonna do is just press this until you get B. F where's B? B. B is minus one. Okay. So you go up. If you can't find it on plus, go minus, you get minus, you get B. So now this will now become B. My C becomes B because you're transposing down. But if I take it back to standard pitch and I play the same C, you see that? So you can transpose this instrument really easily. So any key your friends tell you that they're playing in and you know how to play the key of C, you're good, you're fine. So let's run through the scale of C and we'll be done for this particular video and um, we'll work on other things another time, okay? So I put on my next strap, makes my life easier. And don't, make sure you're not bending. If, when I started, I used to do like it. But I try more and more to do like it. Because at the end, my back used to pain me a lot. There's a lot of pain from the wrong posture and you don't wanna, you don't wanna have that back pain. So. Make sure you adopt a good posture, straighten your back and bring the instrument up a bit. So C is this, C, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. D, one, two, two, three, one, two, three. E, one, two, three, one, two. F, one, two, three, one. G, one, two, three. A, two. B, one. And see, and it's of note that if you want to go to the next octave, I can just press the octave button, hold it down, and continue the octave. So I can start. Let me start from where you we just did, and we'll go all the way to the top octave and come back. One hand on just this one octave. So that's all I, we can do right now in this very first video. Wow, it's been a while and I want to say congratulations on getting your aerophone. You made it to the end of this video. My name again is Toya Resenara and I'm glad to add some value to you and your instrument playing. Please, because this is a YouTube class, it's gonna be easy to reach me in the comments, ask your questions. Myself or other experienced veterans in the aerophone space can answer your questions. If you want any follow-up videos, let me know. I'll try to work on that. I told you like this is a busy season for me right now, but as long as I can get videos out to you, I will do that. So I'll work on it and yeah, thank you very much for tuning in and I'll play something as you head out. The way my favorite setting on this thing, um, I'll give you my brass set. I just like the brass. So scene six and I scroll down to number 10. So another day we'll talk about the aerophone as a MIDI instrument. Aerophone as a MIDI instrument is actually really good as a MIDI instrument. That's for another day. I'll tell you about my exploits and how we have gotten some recordings and some songs already released on the aerophone. I have some songs right now. 
I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about designing a song that's just by the aerophone, all the parts, every single thing by the aerophone. Let me know if you think about that. Would you, would you listen to that? Would you download that? Would you want to share that with a friend? Let me know. Bye-bye. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Amazing. Peace out, guys.